And all right, we're going to get Andy Abramson back. Andy Abramson back to uh, fill us in on what's going on. You want to get James mic'd up? All right, is he going to go now or do they need some intro time? Okay, bring him by. We'll take a break to mic James up. So what's been going on since I last saw you? Robots, robots, and more robots. I love it. I love it. Vegas is poised to become the epicenter of robotics here in North America, maybe the world. We have a lot of open space. We have beautiful clear span uh, warehouse type buildings, which you need so that you can do all types of different size robots. We've got a thriving youth community that's very interested in the whole idea of robotics. Plus we have an entire under the radar community working for the military doing robots for Air Force. We got a whole base that's all about robots. Yeah. We don't call them robots. We call them uh, UAVs or, or, or right. UPAs, but UAPs. But, but we've got all that going on. And then, you know, a couple hundred miles to the west, you've got the naval warfare stuff mm -hmm. that DARPA's doing. That China Lake? No, when you go out towards the Pacific Ocean mm -hmm. around Ventura. Oh, okay. And Malibu, that whole area. Yeah. You've got the underwater UAVs. Yes. So the underwater drones, the submarines that look like manta rays, it somehow showed up in a Google map photo. Mm. Uh, I heard about that. I didn't see the picture, but I heard about I that. I saw it. It was very cool. I wouldn't mind having one to swim with. Exciting. But when you think about where we are and where we're positioned and how much open space we have, how many people are moving in, according to the most recent economic department studies, the number of people moving into the Las Vegas metro area in Clark County is going to keep growing. We haven't stopped and we're going to keep moving out and out and out, but the labor pool is going to be augmented by robots. Which is going to be very exciting. Very exciting. We're going to start to see more things. I was in an airport recently. I was actually twice. I've seen this. I was in Amsterdam in the KLM lounge. And then I was in the Newark United lounge and they have these wonderful robotic carts that roll around the lounge and the serving staff puts the dirty dishes on the carts and then the carts roll off and out comes new clean plates and clean dishes and clean glassware. But what that means is instead of the servers and the waiters and the waitresses having to take all that stuff and lug it mm -hmm. in, they're spending more time taking care of the people who are in the room. And security doesn't have to vet multiple people coming in and out to carry in dishes in and out. That's correct. So that's a, well, that's a, they're already secure. That, that, they're already past the security area. But mm -hmm. the, the reality is that I talked to a couple of the um, servers in the United Club, in the Hemisphere Lounge in, in Newark. I said, what do you think about the robot? And they go, oh, we love it. You don't think it's taking your job? Oh, no, it's making us more valuable because we're talking to guests like you and we can help you with things that you need, which is a big difference than where, where's somebody to help me. You know, you're looking around and you need somebody to help you and you can't find it. They're there. And I even said, well, I think the robot's really cute. Okay. I want to get a video of it. And they went out and they arranged for the robot to come visit me. Cool. How, how do you think, I want you to keep talking because I'm going to help with a microphone here in a sure. second. Go ahead. Um, how do you think we can apply those kinds of things to what we do here in Las Vegas across oh. all the different all the different hospitality and entertainment yeah, industries? Casino, we do? but the casino workers are going to be opposed to it because the they they look at it that today they're working with the robot, next year the robot's taking their job. So a lot of the unions are pushing back on the whole idea of robotic assistance in the casino industry and in the hotel industry in general. To your point, robots can do a lot of things that people can do, but there's a lot of things we can't do. For example, they can work 24 hours a day, seven days a week without having to take a break. Maybe occasionally you have to squirt them with some WD-40, mm -hmm. but beyond that, they're going to keep working. Yeah. So there's no lunch break. There's no dinner break. There's no coffee break. There's no smoke break. There's no any other kind of break. And that's great for a 24-7 town like Vegas. It's great for, think about the food service industry, but not, or think the grocery industry. All, we don't even have here yet super grocer stores. Like when I travel through Europe, and you can see the giant Carrefour, Giant, and other locations where you have already put your order in, 
the robots have done the picking. They filled up your tubs and you bring your car up and out comes on the, the sliding table comes your tubs and you put your tubs in the car. And then when you come back, you bring your old tubs. Well, the stuff that's doing the picking is robotic, not a human. And that's pretty cool. So you can pretty much shop 24 hours a day. The robot's picking 24 hours a day. And if you need to pick it up at 3 a.m., you put your order in at midnight and it's ready three hours later. We don't have that yet. We have 24 hour supermarkets, mm -hmm. but usually when you go to a supermarket, 24 hours, a 24 hour supermarket in the middle of the night, what are they doing? They're stocking the shelves. Yep. Well, if you could just go to a location in the middle of nowhere and you get your tubs and you're gone, you don't have to leave your car. Won't, won't hurt my feelings if I don't have to walk up and down the aisles to get my stuff. So right. what do you think both technically and culturally some of the barriers <laughs> we might need to overcome to get to that point with those super supermarkets? Well, first, we have to overcome union regulations. Okay. Because depending on, and I'm talking you know, nationally, depending where you are in the United States, you could be a member of the, of the grocery workers, you, retail clerks union, it would mm -hmm. be. And that's the union. And they're a pretty large union. And then there, you also have the grocery workers. You have, you know, every hotel workers, there's constant union regulations. And their whole role is to keep people, members working. Well, I look at it that if we build robots the right way, we can have those people doing better things. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, I think we can free humans up to do things humans are good and need to be doing. Right. We and need then, to do upskilling, then, Jason. The, yeah, the word upskilling is to train people to be better than what they're doing today, not just leave them, okay, well, you're, you're a stock clerk. Well, couldn't you do something else? Couldn't you be elevated in your position to do another more important job, higher skilled job? 